So good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to tell you about uh, the biochronological methods that we used in order to study the Canadian tree cords across the Permian-Triassic boundary in South China. So I will start with a quick reminding about the end Permian mass extinction, also called the mother of all mass extinction. With this catastrophic view of uh, an apocalyptic, apocalyptic crisis that um, uh, that uh, kill like 90 percent of all marine organisms. The traditional view of this extinction uh, is that it was followed by a delayed biotic recovery, but it has been since showed that for nectopelagic taxa and benthic taxa that the reco biotic recovery was very short. In any case, this uh, the question of the timing of the biotic recovery after the mass extinction is a hot topic and for in order to build um, an accurate uh, biochronological time work, you need biostratigraphical fossils, such as conodonts. So this is just a quick, uh, short scheme of the number of species, the diversity of conodonts across the Permian-Triassic boundary. So the late, this is the late Permian sub-stage that follows by and the early Triassic. So uh, in this interval, Conodonts were divided into four main families, namely Neogondolelids, Anchignathodontids, Neospathodids, and Elisonids. Only the three first ones are mostly used in biostratigraphical studies. Neogondolelids underwent a gradual decline of the number of genera throughout the, the entire Permian, and especially the late Permian, and only half of the species. Uh, survived the end Permian mass extinction. From the survivors stemmed all the Neogondolelids during the uh, early Triassic. In another hand, Anchignathodontids underwent a uh, sharp radiation from the uh, latest Permian to the uh, to the Grisbeckian, the first substage of the early Triassic. They disappear at the end of the Grisbeckian uh, and, uh, and are replaced by Neospathodids. Who most likely, which most likely stemmed, uh, evolved from Neogondolelids. So in this study, we focused mostly on the end Permian, latest Permian stage, and earliest Triassic, the Grisbeckian. So all of this uh, study is based on Neogondolelids and Anchignathodontids. Our region of interest is South China, which was located in the equatorial realm and during the early Triassic. Why there? Because you have a lot of sections uh, it's, it's, uh, with a lot of conodonts and also intercalated between the limestone beds are sometimes ash layers <coughs> which allow absolute datations. In China also you have most of the time a continuous record across the Permian-Triassic boundary. So among a uh, number of sections that I found in the literature, I selected six that combine a uh, good abundant conodont record, uh, a good um, a stratigraphical information about the elevation, and also a lot of pictures in order to standardize the taxonomy and to build these intrabasonal correlations. Among these six sections uh, is Meishan, which is the GSSP of the Permian Triassic boundary. We didn't build the correlation based on traditional interval zones, and I will show you why. So in these pictures, you have the six sections selected. This mouse in the room, yeah. The six sections here. And the first occurrences of every conodont index species that were used uh, in order to build interval zones. So interval zones are based the, uh, on first occurrences of index fossils. And you see at first glance that the first occurrences are crisscrossing each other. And if we take one particular example, Hindeodus parvus, which is the index, the fossil index for the base of the Triassic, and here number nine in pink, you see that its first occurrence occurs below the first occurrence of seven, Hindeodus preparvus at Wuduan, same at Dajong, but its first occurrence is above uh, the first occurrence of Hindeodus preparvus at Darwin. So that's already an evidence of like diachronous correlation. As well, the, the time, or the, like, the length of the interim results are strongly dependent on the <coughs> single occurrence of the next index fossils. 
So in order to circumvent this diachronous correlation, which are due to the time lag between the first appearance of a species and its first local occurrence in a section, which is due to preservational bias or geological exclusion and sampling bias, we rather than on first occurrences, we focused on maximal associations, which are in one section, uh, of, uh, at the scale of one section called maximal horizons. So this is just the example of the section at Boudouin, where uh, I identified five, uh, four maximal horizons. So they are discrete assemblages of maximal association of species. And they make it more, much more robust to correlate different sections together. So from these six sections, we identified six unitary association zones. That's, that's the unit. Uh, the, from one to six, the number one is the eldest, number six is the youngest. They are all characterized by a sequence of conodon species. And they can be identified if you find the, pair of, the pairs of characteristic species or the character species, they can be identified in any other sections after. So for instance, according to the, to the uh, definition of the Permian Triassic boundary, the first um, Grisback and so early Triassic zone is number three. The Permian Triassic boundary is located any time between uh, this zone number two and this zone number three. And you can identify it if you find either Neogondolella zeijonensis or Neogondolella tulungensis associated with either Hindeudus chansingensis Neongondolella planata, uh, Isacicella hucridae, uh, Neotus parvus, or Neongondolella taylori. So you have to find uh, one pair from this assemblage. Atomation section is also an endemic species, Neotus pisae. So that's how you identify, uh, you identify an, uh, a zone, an interval, uh, unitary association zone in the section. <coughs> Thing is, colonons do not all thrive in the same environment. And encinatodontids are more thrive more in shallower environments, while neogondolelids are, are more abundant in colder or deeper environment water setting. So, what happens in case of complete ecological exclusion? We made a test and we produced two uh, sequence uh, based on the subsets from encinatodontids on one side and neogondolelids on the other side. Then we compared these new sequences with our first sequence of, unitary, of six unitary association. So that's our un initial data, uh, data set. This is with the Ankinathodontid subset, and this is with the Neogondolelid subset. So you can see that the resolution is lower, of course, because you have less species. But what uh, you can also see is that in every case, the Permian Triassic boundary can still be identified because it actually corresponds to a turnover in conodont fauna. We can study this turnover just by taking the number of species. Here, number of species of Ankinathodontids in bright, and of Neogondolelids in dark, or the turnover rate. In dark are the extinction, in bright are the radiation. <coughs> so we can recognize uh, already that we saw from the paper of Old Child 2007, the radiation of Ankinathodontids at the Permian Triassic boundary and the extinction of Neogondolelids. But you can also see another event between a sharp extinction between UA Unitary Association 5 and U Unitary Association 6. And it corresponds to a uh, disappearance of Ankinathodontids fauna. Actually, uh, when we went back to the sequence of Unitary Association, we noticed that it corresponds to the disappearance of uh, some Isarcicella species at the benefit of Hindeodus postparvus, which becomes dominant in the late Grisbacken. But the main result of this study is, the, is this. So this is the position of unitary association within the six studied section. So in dark is the Permian, in gray is the Triassic, and these whitish uh, um, squares represent the macrobiotite fishes, which is a typical shallow water fishes from the Grisbacken age. So you can see that unitary associations are discrete, and they, they, if in further studies we find more conodonts, we can still like, increase, uh, re reduce the gap between each of them. 
the five um, first unitary associations are found at Mation, and they correspond respectively to beds 24D, 25, 27D, 28, 29, and upward. And at Mation, the bed 25 and 28 were dated thanks to uranium-led absolute dating. So we can then uh, deduce the age of unitary association 2 and unitary association 4, as well as the interval between them. So the time interval between UA2 and UA4 equals to the time interval between bed 25 and 28, and this is 61 plus or minus 48,000 years. This interval also corresponds to the uh, extinction interval that was described like most uh, lastly in Burgess and Al 2014. So we can also say that the extinction interval corresponds to the interval between UA2 and UA4. And I told you that the Permian-Triassic boundary is located between UA2 and UA3. So this extinction interval is spanning uh, the, the per, uh, is spanning the Permian-Triassic boundary. So we should not speak about end Permian mass extinction, but Permian-Triassic boundary mass extinction. You can also see that I if we assume um, a synchronous deposition of the microbialite facies, that at that one section, uh, the top of the Permian is UA2. And at that junk, the base of the Triassic is UA4. So it seems that there is a gap, so because we, we, we just compare, can see from these two sections, the, the other unitary association were not identified, we didn't have enough conodonts. So we have to assume uh, synchronous deposition. In this case, there is a gap at the base of the Grispachian, at the base of the deposition of the microbialites, facious, which corresponds to UA2, to U, from UA2 to UA4, and to the extinction interval. So this study has many conclusions, and here it's the most important. We produce a discrete sequence of six unitary association zones, <coughs> and the Permian-Triassic boundary is falling between the unitary association two and new unitary association uh, number three. We can observe uncoupled diversity trends across the Permian-Triassic boundary for the two families, Ankinathodontids and Neogondolelids. Nevertheless, we can still identify the Permian-Triassic uh, Permian boundary in case of complete ecological exclusion. The main extinction event it identified at Mation section spans the interval from UA2 to UA4, and it corresponds at the hiatus at the base of the Triassic in microbialite bearing sections. Also, we should rather speak of Permian-Triassic boundary mass extinction as the extinction interval spans the, the Permian-Triassic boundary. Thank you for your attention.